Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna with Hasna Snap Me and we were on the discussion of the arches of the foot. We've already talked about the two types of arches. We've talked about the subtypes of those arches and we've achieved a basic understanding of these arches in depth. Today we're going to talk about the various functions of these arches, all right? So there are about five functions of these arches. The first function of the arches is to allow the distribution of body weight. The arches help that certain areas are going to support the body more than the other areas. That's why the footprint when it is formed, only certain areas come in contact with ground that are important for weight bearing of your body. So what are these areas that come in contact with the ground? The phalanges will always come in contact with the ground. The balls of the big toe and the little toe come in contact with the ground. The lateral border obviously is going to come in contact with the ground. The heel, because if you remember the anterior and posterior ends were formed by what medially by the metatarsal head and the calcaneum in both arches. Even in the transverse arch, the two first and fifth metatarsals were forming the ends of the arch. And the posterior transverse arch, we already discussed that lateral end of this arch is uh, going to be in contact with the ground while medially it is incomplete. So nothing forms medially. The second function is that these arches will act as springs. And why do they have to act as springs? So that person can walk on uneven ground or person can run, person can walk easily. All right. Third function of these arches is that they act as shock absorbers when you jump or when you run. All right. Fourth function is that these arches protect the soft tissues of the soul. All right. Because if you imagine that if my foot was flat, and there were nerves and arteries passing through. So if it's flat due to pressure of your entire body weight, the nerve and the vessels would get compressed. But this is saved by the arches against pressure. So when there is an arch, your nerve and artery can easily have the space to rest and not get compressed. And finally, the function of the medial longitudinal arch is to provide resiliency to the foot. The lateral longitudinal arch has the function of giving rigidity to the foot. These are the important functions of the arches of the foot. Now we're going to talk about what are the major factors that maintain the arches. So if you imagine that, okay, your foot is full of bones, it's made. But now what is going to cause these arches to form? Because your bones are just kept bare. There has to be some ligaments, tissues, muscles that have to lift the arches to produce those arches. All right. So how are these arches formed? Or what are the factors maintaining them? So the first thing that you need, so let's suppose that there is a rough framework of the foot, all the bones are kept in front of us. We have to somehow form an arch out of it, all right? So the first thing that is done is the shape of the bones is going to help you get that. So the shapes of the bone, the various wedge-shaped bones, they will cause a little concavity, you can say that will help in the arch, all right? So the shape really matters. The second part is the intersegmental ties. Now you have to link the various bones of your foot to each other, all right? Joints are formed to link them up, but you have to hold these segments together somehow. So who forms those intersegmental ties? Those are formed by the ligaments and the muscles, all right? Third part, we need to make tie beams or bowstrings. The tie beams means these are the structures that will join the anterior end to the posterior end. Because when you join these two, then you get a very tightened structure that is an arch, if you understand. So tie beams are those structures that are linking up the anterior and posterior ends or the two ends of the arches, all right? So in case of transverse arches, the first and fifth metatarsal are linked up by tie beams, all right? Then we have the slings. Now we have to form the summit of the arches, all right? How will we, okay, now everything's linked up, intersegmental ties have been formed, all the relations between the bones have been formed, tie beams, anterior posterior ends are linked up. Now we need to form the highest summit point of the arches, something that will pull the arches up. Those are known as the slings. Slings are responsible for pulling the arch up to form a summit. And finally, suspension. These are the five steps in forming your arch. All right. So now let's talk about these in depth in each arch. Let's talk about the intersegmental ties first.
What are the intersegmental ties in the medial longitudinal arch? Once again, intersegmental ties are linking up the various bony structures up. So what is an intersegmental tie that links up these bones on the medial side of your foot? Well, this is the spring ligament which links up the calcaneum and navicular because it runs from the anterior aspect or the anterior margin of the syntaculum telli all the way till the navicular. So the spring ligament is the intersegmental tie of the medial longitudinal arch. So you've joined two segments together. What about the lateral longitudinal arch? The intersegmental ties in the lateral longitudinal arch are the two ligaments on the plantar side. These are the long and the short plantar ligaments. The long plantar ligament runs from calcaneum all the way till the metatarsals while the short plantar ligament runs between the calcaneum and cuboid. So these two are very important in basically connecting the segments of the lateral longitudinal arch intersegmental tie of the lateral longitudinal arch. What about the anterior transverse and posterior transverse arch? What is the intersegmental tie between these arches? Well, it is the interosseous muscles because if you know that these transverse arches are mostly formed between the metatarsals, all right? So the metatarsals are linked up to each other via the interosseous muscles between them. So their intersegmental ties both share the same, the interosseous muscles. So let's talk about the tie beams. What is a tie beam for the medial longitudinal arch? Tie beam is anything that's linking up the anterior end with the posterior end. So what was the anterior end of the medial longitudinal arch? These three metatarsals, heads, and the medial tubercle of the calcaneum was the posterior end. What links them up? Both medial and lateral longitudinal arch, this role is played by the plantar eponeurosis because it's a very thick eponeurosis. It literally runs below these two arches, the entire plantar area of the foot. It is running bit below them and it's very strong and thick that holds the two ends together so that the arch can be formed. So if something is going to hold me from the anterior end and the posterior end, then it causes that arching. The plantar eponeurosis and not just that, but the first layer of sole muscles. The sole has muscles in its first layer, which we'll talk about in the next video. In case of the transverse arches, this role, the tie beam role, the joining the two ends is played by a muscle that is obviously going to be running transverse. So this is played by the adductor hallucis muscle. Let's talk about the slings. What are the structures that are holding four arches at their summits? All right. So a sling is anything that is holding the arch from above, from its summit, so that the arch can be pulled upwards. Overall, it is important to know that tibialis anterior and peroneus longus are the two important muscles that will form a combination or a stirrup. All right. So these two form a stirrup, the peroneus longus and tibialis anterior, which will hold from the middle of the foot. These two will give a pressure that will cause the middle of the foot to raise. So both medial and lateral longitudinal arch have the peroneus longus tibialis anterior acting together as a stirrup to lift both arches. Now let's talk about individual. Medial longitudinal arches sling is formed by the posterior compartment muscles because the posterior compartment muscles are coming medially. All right. So the posterior compartment muscles, they are going to uh, basically provide a pull because they're coming from the legs. So obviously anything that's coming from above is going to pull uh, it upwards. So the posterior compartment muscles are the sling for the medial longitudinal arch while the obviously lateral longitudinal arch uh, the sling will be will be the lateral compartment muscles these are peroneus longus and brevis and finally the transverse arches have a sling which is peroneus longus and tibialis posterior these two form the sling for both these arches the suspension of the medial longitudinal arch is formed by the tibialis anterior and the suspension for the lateral longitudinal arch is formed by the peroneus longus. So these were basically the maintaining factors of the arches. So that was all for today's video. In the next video, I'll discuss the clinicals of the arches of foot. Thank you so much for watching.